Seven to eight. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name's uh, Detective Superintendent Steve Taylor. I'm the officer in charge of the Serious and Organised Crime Branch in Adelaide. On Tuesday the 18th of this month, detectives from the Serious and Organised Crime Branch, aided with Star Group, attended this address behind me, which is uh, in Morfitt Vale. It was in relation to uh, Operation um, Revoke, which was a, a long-term drug investigation. Uh, once inside, uh, detectives located a very sophisticated clandestine drug laboratory. Uh, as a result of that, a 42-year-old man from this address was arrested and he'll be facing serious drug charges in terms of uh, manufacturing, producing and trafficking a large commercial quantity of methamphetamine. As the evening progressed on and this uh, investigation started, or the, the raid I should say, started at about 10pm on the Tuesday night, uh, other addresses were, were uh, searched with the aid of STAR and also with the Australian Federal Police. Addresses searched included uh, locations at Waterloo Corner, Rosewater and Kilkenny. At the location at Waterloo Corner there was uh, evidence of other drug uh, paraphernalia. Um, that investigation is still ongoing. Uh, due to the lateness of the hour, uh, this lab scene here was closed down for the evening and it was then uh, the commencement of the processing uh, took place on the 19th. This is a really significant drug lab. It's one of the biggest uh, we've seen for many years here. Um, it's uh, the quantity of illicit drugs we actually located was about 10 litres of high grade methamphetamine oil. Uh, that would produce uh, at least 10 kilo of high grade methamphetamine. The information we have and, and the investigation that's led us to this point uh, would indicate that uh, this this particular lab would have a, a yield value of uh, close to 120 kilos per week. So needless to say, we're very pleased to be able to, uh, to stop that uh, syndicate group. As the investigation progressed over the last 24 and 48 hours, it's led us to other locations. Uh, again, at Clovelly Park, Lockleys, Mitchell Park, and also at Cadell. Now, uh, some evidence of uh, illicit drugs were located at some of the addresses. I can provide those details to you uh, at the end of this. But in particular, the uh, address at Cadell, which is uh, actually occurring today, uh, it's a, a quite a large rural property and will be there for some time. So we'd expect we'll be there for at least another night, uh, perhaps longer. So that uh, investigation is still unfolding. At one of the locations in the southern suburbs at a storage facility, we actually found a large quantity of uh, uh, clandestine drug laboratory equipment again. Uh, again, it's very large scale, it's uh, commercial in size, uh, and that'll be processed tomorrow. In terms of this lab itself, it's, it's one of the biggest we've seen for many years, um, and I'd say we'll be processing this uh, with our uh, clan lab experts probably until Sunday. Uh, this investigation is actually a culmination of uh, several months work between uh, South Australia Police, uh, Australian Federal Police and also the Australian Criminal In uh, Crime Intelligence Commission. Uh, any questions? Um, have you made any more arrests in relation to those other addresses? Yes, there's been uh, three other arrests just for various drug related matters. Can How you just say their ages and male or female as well? Yeah, the, the ages, there was, uh, I think there were three, three people have been arrested Two are uh, males the age of 22 and another one is also a male the age of 20. How did this group come um, to the attention of authorities? Uh, it's been an ongoing investigation for some months. Are there any links taken to state or overseas? This or uh, we would say that this, uh, this particular syndicate would have links not just throughout Australia but also um, uh, perhaps international links but most certainly uh, at a national level. In terms of this lab, you say it's one of the biggest you've ever seen why it doesn't make it so big. Can you sort of explain to people at home, is the whole house filled with drug paraphernalia or is it? Essentially it is, yes, there's, uh, there's uh, what appears to be one, one room is, is relatively vacant for perhaps living and, and uh, the rest of it, and we'll provide some video of that, um, it's really significant in terms of the, the volume and the quantity of, and the size of the, uh, of the syndicate set up. And how long do you think it would take time to set up something like this? Uh, it would take a period of uh, uh, probably months, I'd say. So to that end, I'd, I'd actually make the request of, of the public here. Uh, this is a pretty quiet suburb, pretty quiet street. Uh, if any of the local residents here have seen anything unusual over the past few months, any strange comings and goings, any vehicles that have been coming that uh, 
have come to their attention. Um, if we could be advised of that, that would be uh, very good for us. The sophistication of the setup, does that speak to the level of this syndicate and the way in which they operate? Um, th this is most certainly not a backyard type uh, concern. This, this is a high level organised crime syndicate. Uh, and typically with organised crime syndicates, what we find is that um, if you could imagine a production line, it's uh, everyone has their set task along the production line. Uh, uh, but um, what we find is that they, uh, the people that run the syndicate, they isolate and insulate themselves from the front line. So um, all of the people involved in this concern uh, would probably find that most people don't know of the identities of the people that they're working alongside or sort of the next person in the, in the um, production line. So. The um, value of this setup, like the and the others around. Um, like sort of I think uh, this this particular one with the uh, method we found, which has yet to go through another process, uh, salting out process to turn it into the crystalline form. Um, this would equate to probably ninety thousand street doses. So that would be, uh, I think we worked that out at around um, around four million dollars, I believe. Uh, it's, it's actually it's actually linked to this network so it's a, as I say it's, it's, it's a large network uh, there's a few people at the very top of the network and we would suggest this uh, the person here is one of one of the people in the network one of many so this would be one of the drug cooks and going forward with these other properties do you expect more arrests to be made or do you expect uh, more labs yes. to be uncovered as well uh, as I said, the, uh, the job that's still unfolding up at Cadell, um, that will be some time before we have an outcome on that. It's quite a large property, uh, but we would be hopeful that there'll be further arrests made uh, in the very near future. What can you tell us about Cadell? Like what's, what's there? What have you found so far? Um, I probably won't comment on that at this stage, um, but we've got a number of officers on the ground up there at the moment. All good, everybody? Sorry, can I just get you to say clearly, because I know you sort of had a look down, just the um, street value and how many... Um, this would have this, yeah, okay. yeah, yep. sorry. So yeah, how, many, yep. how much? We would say uh, with, with the quantity that was located here, it would equate to approximately 90,000 street doses, uh, which would be around four to four and a half million dollars.